Hello, welcome uh, to the session Acceptance Testing with Page Objects. Uh, I'm going to introduce uh, the concept of Page Objects. Um, who of you have heard of Page Objects? I don't know. Okay, do you use it? Um, do you, you don't use it in daily testing? No, not really. Okay. Um, so, just let me introduce myself uh, to begin with. My name is Niels Dracek. I'm around in the web with uh, uh, alias Nibra. And on Twitter you can find me with Hippie. Uh, those who know me know why. Um, I'm developing since uh, 1983, I started very early, and uh, I worked on mainframes, Amiga, PCs, everything, with COBOL and C and whatever you can think of. I'm doing PHP since 1999, uh, and I started with uh, Joomla when it still was called Mango. Uh, I'm currently working as a software quality consultant. Uh, so whenever you struggle with your development process, uh, you can hire me. And uh, as such, of course, uh, I'm also a clean code developer because uh, you can't make quality software without clean code. Yeah. So um, I chose an example by taking the login screen from Juno and uh, simplified it a bit so it can fit the screen because there are a lot of diffs in there that uh, technically are needless, but uh, obviously I need for styling. But I just omitted them here. <coughs> so we have here in this code uh, a couple of fields, a username field, a password field, <coughs> a language selector, and uh, a button, and some fields you can't uh, skim at the, at the first sight. This is uh, forgot your username and uh, for, forgot your password. Um, and uh, the way it's implemented can change any time. And uh, we see why it could be a problem. But let's start with uh, just writing a little test for this. I use conception as an example here because uh, the automatic testing team switched to conception as a task runner. And uh, it can run uh, PHP unit tests. And the new version 2.2 is uh, able to uh, do Gherkin tests. So we can use acceptance tests as well. Uh, that's why I used uh, the basic conception here. Uh, even if you don't know conception, it's understandable, I hope. Uh, so uh, the first thing we do is we ensure that we are on the right page. So we navigate to the administrator page. Then we wait for six seconds because it may take some time. Uh, next, we identify the uh, field with the username by ID, fill in the username, the same with the password field, and then uh, we click on the login button, and we wait for four seconds for the reaction, and then we do our uh, searches. Okay? Uh, that's the one case for a successful login. Uh, the next thing is, uh, what happens if we have a valid password? So we do another test, if this works right. Structure is the same, because it's the same fields. And uh, the next thing we could have, uh, we have a valid username. Uh, and we build another test. So now we have uh, a couple of tests. We have some web pages, we have green tests. Fine, we're glad. So now, George, changes the wording of the button. Instead of logging in, he calls it authenticate. So what happens? This one change makes all our tests red. They don't work anymore. Why don't they work anymore? We have hard coded the login. Yeah? Uh, and this, of course, a, a problem. That leads to that uh, acceptance tests are fragile. Whenever you do anything on your side, your tests break. And that's uh, why well, it's not fun to do acceptance tests. Nobody does because of that. 
Yeah, it's, it's a horror. Whenever you change anything, you have to redo all the tests. And we don't uh, want that. Yeah? Every small change needs to redo everything. So what's wrong with that? Why does it happen? Yeah? That's because we are violating nearly every principle we have in clean code. There's no encapsulation, no separation of concerns. Yeah? We violate the, the don't repeat yourself principle. We have uh, a dependency on implementation instead of interface. Yeah? And we have a very tight coupling to, to uh, the HTML code. So how do we solve that? That's done by introducing page objects. So uh, most of you know so uh, uh, there's no need to, to explain what they do exactly, but I'll show. This is a simple page object for this login screen. Um, it gets initiated with a web driver, so it can talk to the page and, and uh, see the HTML. And uh, every function you have on this uh, gets reflected here by, by a method. So you can open the page, uh, you can enter your credentials, you can click the login button. Yeah. Um, so our tests now look this way. <coughs> yeah, it's much more comprehensive. Um, we, we can read in the test what we would explain to a customer. Yeah. Open the page. And the credentials, click on it, uh, and uh, submit the form. Yeah? So if we change our test this way, uh, they're, they're much more readable. Um, but we get another problem. Now, OK, let's address this first. Uh, we have waited six seconds or four seconds. Uh, this is a value, it's big because we don't know exactly on which environment this is run, so we don't know how long it takes. But tests should run as fast as possible. So it's never a good idea to wait for a certain amount of time, because time doesn't matter on computers. Uh, we should uh, wait for state as a page. So as soon as a certain element appears, the page is ready for the test. So we change the wait statement just to wait for, in case it's open, the page is open as soon as I can see this field. And these methods are part of conception out of the box? Yes, I, I did not uh, add anything to, to a conception yet. Um, yes, and then uh, in the case of submit, we wait for the control panel to appear. So, uh, this is a good idea to wait for a certain text or, or element to appear. But that leads to a new problem uh, that our tests. Wait, yes. Uh, okay, so the next slide. Uh, the next thing we want to do is uh, to, uh, the, to, to get the method methods to return the page that is expected stage because uh, you want to check that the workflow is correct and uh, the page an action expects a certain page as a result uh, as is if, you, if I log in I want to see the control panel so uh, the next object I have to work with is the control panel page and uh, there's no reason or valid reason to do that within the test because it's uh, a property of the page. Uh, so uh, what we do is that any action on the page object will return the page that should be shown next. And the page object itself should uh, then have, have a method to uh, verify that we are on that page. Yes? So uh, in case uh, the page is open, we are still on the same uh, page, so we return this. When we enter the credentials, 
this login screen, <coughs> we also stay on the page. There are no auto submit. Uh, so we expect to stay on, on the login screen. So we return this here as well. Uh, but when we sub submit the form, then we expect to get the control panel. So we, ret we return the control panel page. So the test can work on that. So now we come to the problem I as tried to come to a few slides before. We have tests with a valid password and unknown username. They don't go to uh, the control panel page. They stay on the login page. So what now? So actually, we have uh, submit returning to different pages, depending on context. So what we do is uh, to introduce a new submit function, a submit expecting errors. Because in our tests, we know that we are expecting a problem here. So we can just say, I log in expecting an error. Yeah? And in this case, so we wait for, not for the control page, but for the warning to appear, uh, and return login page. Our tests now look much nicer, and was most important now the work. Yeah. <coughs> so uh, we assign on every function call or uh, method call, we assign the result to a page. Yeah, we, because we get a page every time. We know that because that's by design. And. Uh, you can always, at any stage, ask the page object for being valid or in sync with what the browser shows currently. Yeah. Our assertions don't change here. So now uh, I did some refactoring of the test. It's mostly the same as here, but we have still have the, the same structure in every test. So it's not dry. Yeah, we are still violating the don't repeat yourself uh, principle. So the next step is uh, to refactor that and uh, build login functions. Because what we do is a login. And uh, we also communicate this as that. Because uh, if we have a customer that knows how to do, we just tell it, log in. So why not do that in tests? Uh, uh, so uh, for the two different submits we had, we built a login function for each. A uh, login that will succeed and a login that will fail. And now our tests are very readable. Uh, we just log into backend. And that's all you have to say. Uh, and the next step will be um, to transfer these, uh, these methods uh, into <coughs> the step. -up. Because sometimes you can have steps uh, that can be done on several pages. So you separate it, also classified, so you can reuse it on other pages. Uh, I don't have. Uh, made more on, on, on this code to, to, to introduce step objects. I didn't expect to be that fast. <laughs> um, but with this, we get stable tests because the page object really knows how to handle things. And uh, we have a structure that looks like this. We, have, we still have the pages, we still have the tests, but we have an abstraction layer between which we call the page objects. So what they do? They have public methods that represent uh, all the services that the page uh, offers. And uh, we don't expose any internals of the page. Within the test, we don't rely on the implementation. So whenever one page changes, you change the, the uh, according uh, page object and you're fine, the test will work. There's one place to change, no more. And that's why we are doing this. Yeah? Uh, within a page object, we never 
to a search list. Because you actually might in a test want it to fail on another aspect. You don't you can't uh, do any general things on this. Whenever you, you need, feel the need for, for doing an assertion, you just provide a Boolean method that checks the state so you can test against it. Yeah, but never assert this in a page of all step object. Never. Okay? Methods always return, beside the, the Boolean, of course, the uh, page objects again. Um, and the most important thing is that a page object, despite its name, does not have to represent a whole page. Uh, it makes sense to have a page object representing the Apple menu. It makes sense uh, to have a page object for each module. Yeah? Uh, so, so you can uh, compose a, a bigger page by dragging in the module and uh, reuse the same module on another page. Yeah? Um, and uh, if, we, if um, uh, an action could result in, in different pages, of course, we make different methods of it. See, the only point where I am uh, having difficulty is seeing why this is not good against the dry principle, because the action is the same, the result is just different. So if you look at your last slide of the code, both methods are exactly the same thing, just true or false. So shouldn't the page object be able to that? I mean, uh, one is the, the last two? Yeah. They will go in the end into a step object, which is uh, uh, it's it's um, a kind of page object, but, but it's not representing um, a page, but a, 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 a macro of, of uh, actions on a page. Yeah, so we are separating these these two uh, on on, a, on an extra layer. Yeah. Uh, these two <coughs> methods do not belong into the test. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah they, they don't, absolutely not. But uh, in, in the order to get there, it's an in between step. Yeah? Okay. Uh, so basically, you need to call just one and don't care. Yeah, you, you can't because you get back the page and you have to get the right page. Yeah, shouldn't the page decide that? That's my question. So, so no, because that's the second page. So if you're being redirected after a successful login, the login page actually doesn't know that. Well, it does because it's not doing what it's doing with the, with the login failing method or failing. Yes, but, but if I ever wanted to do this... So uh, I don't see the advantage of moving that thing outside of the page. Why, why is it not on the page? You know I mean, why, why is it not... If, uh, if I see... Yeah, okay, I, 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 you okay I, I, re I repeat for, for, for uh, the recording. Just a question. Um, yeah. The problem why these uh, uh, login to backend and uh, login backend failing uh, not are in the page object uh, is a design principle mm -hmm. because not with these but uh, with other uh, compound actions uh, they could be reusable on other pages. Yeah, in, in selecting a, a menu or, or something. Uh, it could be equal on this page and on that page. So uh, putting them into a page, uh, into a step object allows you to reuse it. Uh, if you put it into the page object, you have to redo it on, on that yeah, page. That's, that's the only reason for it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, and, and what you say I think is still true, that you could split up like this functionality, you, you use it in uh, not the page objects, but do the component objects. So that, that multiple pages are contained within the same yeah, component mocking thing. So that, that would combine multiple pages. Yeah. <coughs> because um, the, the idea was if we built and uh, we actually have a Google Summer of Code project uh, doing this uh, for the call. Um, and uh, it is meant for extension developers to test again. Uh, against the call. Yeah? So they don't have to mock the call or, or something like that. They have page objects for that and can talk to, to the admin pages uh, to test their administration. 
Yeah? Uh, so uh, we reuse everything. We try not to write the same code twice. Yeah? Uh, sometimes we do because we have to be fast. But uh, at next, uh, whenever we have time for that, we of course we factor. Uh, so and <coughs> the right way uh, is uh, to see that this is representing the page. We have certain actions on the page. Uh, the semantics of these in, in compound is a different thing. So by uh, the principle of the separation of concerns, uh, it should be separated. That's one point. And the other point is the reusability of it. Yeah? That's why we do this. So, um, yeah, <coughs> we have the methods now. Uh, what, what I didn't write examples for is uh, the Boolean things. Uh, for example, to, to check if the page, the page is current. So uh, it's a method that tells you if the return page object actually is shown in the browser. Yeah? Of course, you need that. And uh, there will also be functions to uh, ask the page for the current value of the username field. Yeah, because it could be preferred or what, whatsoever. Um, you have functions to yeah, we, we have functions to, to set the credentials, you can ask them, you can ask the state of everything within a page object. Uh, and because that is a concern of the page object to, to match the state, not to work for them. Yeah, that's that's done by step object. So uh, with this, uh, we can easily adopt to changes uh, within uh, uh, the, the HTML code and the pages we get. And what makes page objects wonderful is um, that we can. I, I only uh, I always uh, instantiate them directly here, but. Uh, in practice, you use a page factory for that. And the page factory uh, in its constructor, it has two parameters. It's a Joomla version and it's a template. Yeah? Uh, so you build a, 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 a page object for ISIS login and one for Hazard login, if you want. And you can test against both. By the way, it was the same step object. Yeah, because the workflow is the same. Yeah. There's another reason for separation. And uh, if, if we get to Joomla 6.8, you can still use your, your tests because uh, with uh, 6.8, you will get new page objects. And these page objects will uh, re reflect the changes that have been done there. But the tests will not change, and they will never break again. Uh, if not, you are changing the workflow completely. But that again is covered by the step objects. Uh, so, so within your tests, your, uh, there's rarely a reason for change, and that's the goal. That's where we want to get. Is a page object is it always uh, starting from a clean state, or does it like? Because I played yesterday a little bit with code search. And there you make a test, and then on the next test, it was not the like, database and everything was not set up again. It was like on the, the state from the test before. Um, probably I can do that in my test to, to clean it up all, but do these page objects, do they clean the state before it starts from? It depends on, on your test, how you write it. Because uh, test runner and I, I guess conception does that as well. Uh, I know it from PHP unit that you can return objects from a test in order to reuse them in the next. Yeah? So you can just forward the page you got as a result to the next test to work on with it. So it's conception conceptually no problem. Yeah? So I don't know conception can do that too. Right? This shouldn't break test isolation, so objects shouldn't pass in between tests. But well, you can probably do it for you can do it. You can do composition maybe if you have a test that has several tests in a sequence. You shouldn't have several tests. Yeah, you shouldn't have. Yeah, in, 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 um, 
Acceptance tests are the only tests where it is reasonable to do multiple assertions within one test. Yeah? You don't do so with unit tests or with integration tests because it's silly. Uh, you can't identify the problem. Yeah? Uh, with an acceptance test, because they take long. That's a reason, uh, because you don't want to set up for every test again. Uh, it of course makes sense to check a whole workflow within one test. So you, you define a feature. Let's say, uh, as an administrator, I'm able to create a new article uh, so I can show it to my users. Yeah? Uh, so what you're doing, you're doing the complete workflow. You're logging in, you're going to, to, to the page, you're adding this, and you make your assertions where you need it. Yeah? But what you should do is add um, a message uh, a meaningful message uh, to the assertions. Uh, so when it breaks, you exactly know where it broke. You can get back and, uh, yeah, and, and write more integration or unit tests to identify the exact location of the problem. Because when you go to the acceptance test, your uh, unit and integration tests already work. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. Yeah, because they take a long time. So everything was green there. Now you get a red here. Uh, that just tells you you are missing unit or integration tests. You just add them because of your message you know where. Yeah? And uh, that way you, you get a, a test coverage that's uh, successful and reasonable. So, so question, if you are testing workflow, uh, it's better to log in, create an article, go to the menu, click uh, articles, new article, fill the form in, say that's the create article test. If I want to write the edit article test or delete article test or whatever, it's better to start from scratch again. So again, again, well, whatever, or just follow through the, so, so make the whole workflow, so new plus edit plus delete um. in the same, you know, yeah, it de de depends on what you really want to test, because it could behave differently. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, you need both. If if you if you want to cover everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if, if, if you uh, did log in, and your first action is this, mm -hmm. it could behave different from uh, doing this as an hour later. Yeah. It should, of course. Uh, so that, that really depends on your individual test design. What would you think is reasonable? Uh, there, there's no, no uh, objective guide to that. It depends on, on how you design it. <coughs> yeah? um, we are in this section already. <laughs> um, but uh, I think that uh, the, the Page factory and then the separation of, of the version and the template that can get independent from that, that will help us to, to get a much bigger test base because we ha don't have to throw them away with every new version. And can we use them for throughout the lifetime of, of Juna, whenever they will, they will end in 2000 years or so? Oh, sorry, you were The page factory. Does it automatically create every combination No. Uh, you, you, you can the <coughs> yeah, do you the uh, When you instantiate the page factory, mm -hmm. uh, you give it the information about the version and the type. So you are the one that combines all the problems. Uh, yeah, and uh, this factory then knows by namespace or whatsoever uh, which object to instantiate if you want to look at it. It's not the factory that creates any, any possible combination of the page, yeah. but it's you in the test that asking, asking you for that. Yeah, you, you once and you test two. Okay. Uh, tell the page factory which in version the, combination you want. So you write like four tests for, uh, you know, Isis plus uh, Athor plus 3. Points version of Joomla, you have four tests, right? Yeah, actually not. You, have four you don't have four tests for that. 
to, to, yeah, to address yeah, the yeah, motion. Configurations. You have four configurations. Uh, and then but you so are the one. Yeah, so uh, you run the acceptance test once with your preferred combination. Mm -hmm. And if all goes well, before you release, you go to through a matrix. Mm -hmm. And you can, uh, if it's done correctly, if these, uh, you don't even uh, use uh, constructor parameters for the page factory, but environment variables. So you can set up Travis to go through with the metrics for you. At yeah? the same time. Okay, you, you'll get a timing problem with, with Travis, uh, so you might have a, a self-hosted thing for that, if you want to do everything. But that's something you should do before every release. Yeah? And, uh, yeah, but th this gives you all the flexibility you ever need. Yeah? How does it handle Validation within the page uh, with the Arden JavaScript is covered by, by the page object because we are using the web driver and web driver is a real browser. So you have everything. Uh, JavaScript gets executed and uh, your page object, of course. Yeah, just saying, in the, 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 for instance, the tick box which would uh, go off and do an Ajax call, come back with a result. You could yeah. And then you can, uh, in, in your step object or page object, when, when whatever is suitable for that, uh, you will wait for the result to appear, and then you can check if it's an expected result. Yeah? Because that's why we use web, web browsing, yeah. because you have everything, you are working in a real browser. Yeah? And you can even configure if it should be Firefox or Chrome. Uh, currently, I don't know. Uh, okay, do you know if, if there are others? Rather support it in general? Uh, um, I, I just said that uh, you can use WebDriver in conjunction with Firefox or Chrome. Are there other browsers you can use? Uh, yes, you can uh, actually. It's, uh, into it should work as well, but maybe not this so stable uh -huh. as Firefox. Okay, so you can use other browsers uh, too, uh, including Internet Explorer? Yeah, especially with cloud testing services, you can even use mobile. Okay, but, yeah, then that, uh, of course, need, needs a more complicated setup because uh, in order to run uh, Internet Explorer or, or mobile devices, you have to use virtual machines, uh, while this uh, can be run in parallel with Docker uh, on, on your local environment if you use Unix, which you should. And, uh, yeah. That's, that's techniques like uh, Docker or Vagrant or, or whatsoever. Um, this is a thing that I, from my perception, it's starting. Uh, not everybody's doing it yet, uh, but it's getting easier and easier, and so we are getting more and more tutorials and, and experience with it. Uh, so uh, the usage increases. Um, I'm actually working on, on a test framework uh, for Joomla, especially for extensions. Uh, that makes uh, yeah. integration tests and uh, acceptance tests uh, Docker-based. Yeah? Uh, so uh, you just pull that test framework and you have all the setup with Docker Compose. Uh, so you have several servers, uh, virtual servers, and, and uh, can run the tests in parallel. Um, uh, so there should not be a problem there. 
I, I even intend to, to make it able to uh, pull the right user version. So if you just say I want to test my my product, my extension with uh, Juna 2.5, yeah, you get uh, it goes to the repo, pulls the newest Juna, installs it for you, installs your extension on it if you want it at that stage, and then you can run it. Yeah, and the tests get run. And the results, of course, are combined. Uh, so in your report, you can say, okay, this test uh, works through all, but failed in that combination. Yeah, yeah just to make an example. Where I use Vagrant or where I do not use Vagrant, if I'm the only one working on something, it's like a small extension or a custom client stuff, small things, then I use something like local environment stuff. Most lately I'm using Colette from Marvel, that's just the latest thing that came out, but it's fine to use your own environment. Because you have a single PHP version, a single basic version, you control everything, you know where the extension goes, and so on and so forth. As soon as, as you go either into Teams or uh, releasable extensions, uh, so you have to have multiple PHP checks, uh, with different EVs or, or something like that, then I suggest having a background, so you have a background of the Docker, a, a puppet file or a parent file that states which machine is that. So you can easily share that with anyone that has actually, or, or even with a CI server, you can share it with the CI server so you, you are running tests on a real, uh, uh, real yeah. Yeah, so, so just to assume that uh, it's always a good idea to, to isolate this environment too. Yeah. Uh, that's probably like that. So I have a, a dedicated server. 